Over the years, I've used just about anything that came to hand to stabilize a shot. I'll use bipods, sandbags, a block of wood, a pile of dirt, a rock, a tree limb, someone's shoulder, someone's backpack, uh, whatever it takes to stabilize that more difficult shot. And depending on especially how light or how heavy the rifle is, uh, some of these are gonna work out better in different situations. And really, every one of these supporting methods is going to have its ups and its downs. All of them are great at something and terrible at something else, which might just be portability. But today we're gonna be talking about shooting sticks because uh, Leonard Voorhees, who is a constant commenter uh, down on all the videos, and you really need to check them out because this guy uh, really especially understands optics and he's helped to enlighten me on uh, some of the, the topics that we've been getting into. Uh, he was asking me to talk about shooting sticks, which is pretty fortuitous. On the, the last hunt where I was testing 350 Legend on deer, uh, I actually took this guy out right here. Now this is not your traditional shooting sticks. Uh, that's gonna be you know, kind of two sticks that are usually connected up at the top and you kind of settle your rifle into a yoke or maybe just the X at the top. This is different. This is more of a monopod, but they accomplish a lot of the same things. So yeah, this is the one that I actually took on the hunt and this was quite useful, even though I didn't use it on the actual shot. And we're gonna talk about uh, why. So uh, this by itself is, it's a monopod, a lot like what you get with cameras. I've been using these on cameras for decades. And as you can see, it's not stable all by itself. It's just gonna fall over. Uh, it's not like a tripod and it's not like, you know, a bipod attached to a rifle that everything just kind of stays upright if you walk away from it. This is something where you have to provide input. You are the final two legs in the tripod. This is just one of the legs. And for that, it actually works really well. Like I said, with cameras, I've been using these for a really long time. So you get your proper height, and especially if you're using a long lens, taking a really long shot at something out there, then yeah, you get your camera attached up here. And this just kind of takes up the weight of the camera and it allows you to kind of aim around. It keeps everything extremely steady. This is useful not only in those really long shots where you're trying to keep very stable with a lens that you know may just the tiniest amount of jitter is going to add some kind of striations to the shot. It's gonna give it motion blur, but it's also great for some of those close up ones where you just wanna get that extra sharpness. You wanna make sure that everything is locked in really tightly. And you can use this, as you might imagine, for rifles as well. So yeah, I took this out on the, uh, the recent deer hunt. Here, I'm gonna expand this just a little bit more to give you an idea of what this looks like. So yeah, you just kind of drop the rifle into the yoke and you can see how stable this is already. I've just got one hand on the hand guard. Nothing else is taking up any of the weight. I'm just kind of using this back hand to aim around and to provide that last bit of balance. But especially once I get this tucked into the shoulder and then set the proper height. Yeah, this is extremely stable. So I'd be able to take, you know, maybe normally I could take a, an offhand shot at 200 yards if I was just, you know, kind of standing unsupported. This is gonna maybe double that range, maybe even farther. It kind of depends on how stable I can make the rest of myself. I can do this while standing. I could do it while sitting. Uh, I could be, you know, actually sitting kind of flat on the ground and have this at its lowest position. And I'm gonna be able to get all kinds of stability out of this. It's a lot like having a, a tree that's holding up the rest of this. And the cool thing about this is that I can very quickly choose, okay, how do I want this to stabilize? Do I want it out toward the, uh, the barrel? If I do that, it's going to make the swing a little bit on the slow side. And if I push it a little bit more toward the magazine, then maybe I can have a little bit more flexibility of movement. I can probably uh, swing through a moving target. This right here is the Primos trigger stick. And there are actually different models of this. This one is the monopod version. There is a bipod version as well and a tripod. And this works all the same way with all three of them. If you want to collapse this, if you want to change its height, all you do is just squeeze this trigger and then you can choose the height. And it's actually pretty quiet on that. Uh, you can see that the yoke here 
is pretty generous. You can even get kind of a, a varmint forend. If you have a larger bench style rifle, you can still pretty well get it inside these. And it has these, these little notches that kind of catch on any angles that you may have on your forend. So here, this tends to catch pretty well on the sides of the, uh, the M-lock forearm that we have here. And it really does lock it into place really nicely. This one is rubberized. It has a, uh, a kind of a, a thicker rubber piece sitting on top of the plastic here. And yeah, it does feel very solid. Now there are some particular things about this one that I'd like to talk about. Uh, but first let's chat about the, uh, the type itself. Shooting sticks are pretty rad. And like I said, I did take this on the hunt, um, but they do have some drawbacks. So yeah, it gets you some pretty good stability. But the first thing that I'll mention is that portability can kind of get a little bit weird. You can see that this, for example, is, oh, I don't know, about three feet. Yeah, that's about three feet tall, a little bit less than three feet. Uh, I'm gonna put annotations below to what the, uh, the range is on this. I think this goes from just shy of three feet up to uh, just about, I think it's a little bit over five feet tall. So as you can imagine, it's a little bit of a strange thing to bring in. What I did in this case is I slapped it onto the side of my backpack. I have one of the, uh, the Marine Ilby assault packs and it has clips that I can just kind of attach to anything. So I, I lashed this to the side and I kind of had a choice. If I wanted this to extend a, kind of up above the pack, then it was gonna catch on branches over my head and make noise. If I had it kind of descending below the pack, then the pack doesn't you know, sit on its own anymore and it might catch on logs and other grass down below and make noise that way. So yeah, it does have this kind of size disability going on. They have some other models that if you know you're gonna be seated and not standing, you can get a shorter one of these guys. But uh, I just wanted maximum flexibility so I could either sit or stand. And really, the portability wasn't bad. I, it did catch on branches in some really dense areas. It did make extra noise. But I think still it was better to have it than not. If you're using the non-collapsible shooting sticks, which are just going to be, you know, maybe carbon fiber shafts or fiberglass or something, it's kind of like tent poles, then the problem is probably going to be even worse. They're going to be really long, there are going to be two of them, and the chance of them clattering around is pretty high. Mostly where I see people using those is in some of your desert or prairie areas where folks know that they are, they're going to have a long shot. It's going to be a longer shot on an antelope or something. And um, uh, there's going to be less for the, uh, the sticks to catch on. And I, I think that that's going to work out really well. Um, for myself, since we have some pretty dense undergrowth here and just growth all around, we have a lot of these oaks that just kind of grow everywhere and make a big mess. Uh, something a little bit smaller like this worked out well for me. And what I used this for actually out in the field was to be able to glass uh, some of the areas, just kind of check and see if there were animals around. And um, if I had a longer shot to take, I would have used this. Now, in the case of the actual hunt, like I mentioned when I was talking about uh, what, what the hunt was actually like and what 350 Legend was like on game, um, it, it didn't work out in that case. I had it sitting next to me and I had been glassing around with it, but then when my animal appeared, kind of in the brush on the other side of the forest, uh, I was kind of looking through into the edge of the field. Um, it just didn't make any sense to be using it at that moment. I had moving animals going right to left and I wanted more flexibility than stability. And I figured at that 88 yards that I was looking at, I should have no problem taking the shot off hand. And that turned out to be true. So yeah, all I did was I just kind of very slowly, I'd been sitting on a log, slowly got out of my position, stood up, tracked through the animal, and then squeezed the trigger, took the shot, and that worked great. Uh, if it had been longer, then I definitely would have used the sticks. All right, now what are some of the relative ups and downs of some of the different stability methods that I could have used? Uh, first off, I could have used a tall bipod. This is a seated bipod. Like I was saying, I was sitting on a log. Um, so I could have extended this puppy out and have been waiting uh, for the shot that way. But there are some drawbacks. First off, 
This is going to add weight directly to the front of the rifle. So if it came time to take that offhand shot, it's gonna be made more difficult because not only is this a, a pretty heavy bipod, but it's sitting at the exact wrong spot. It's sitting out at the end of the forearm, and so it's going to make that shot more difficult. So I'm glad that I didn't choose this in this case. Uh, maybe again, if I were kind of in a prairie situation where I knew I was gonna be staking out a large area and I had to be really, really stable, this would have been a better choice. But uh, yeah, I am glad that I did not choose this. Some other issues that can come up. Uh, this is not very flexible about positioning, especially if we're dealing with a lot of undergrowth that's gonna be noisy. I don't wanna spook game. And if I'm all set up for a particular shot, um, you know, I've just got everything all locked in over here. Then what if my game is suddenly off to this side? Okay, so I have to pick this up and then put both feet down in a new spot, possibly crunching into leaves. Um, this one just, you know, even before the hunt, just did not seem optimal to me. And so, yeah, again, I'm very glad that I didn't bring it. Some of the other things that I could have done, I could have used what was in the environment. I could have gotten back behind the log and, you know, kind of gotten across the top of it. That wouldn't have worked in this case because the only way I could see my game was actually to get up over the top of it. So I couldn't really rely on that. And there weren't trees close enough to me to use those as a stability method either. I would have had to walk through all these dry leaves, crunch, 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 to get over to a tree that I could use for stability. I could have used the traditional shooting sticks. Kind of the same problem with the bipod. I would have had two um, items that I'm trying to crunch through the leaves and get just right. To me, this one just felt like it was going to have the most mobility, the most flexibility, and yeah, maybe not the most stability, but when it came to actually getting into position and making sure that I'm not spooking game, this one just felt like it was gonna be the right choice. And overall, I was very correct about that. If I was looking at some of the animals that were a little farther off in different areas, uh, this didn't spook them at all. At $63, I think, is this worth that price tag? And what do we actually get with all of this? Uh, first off, yes, I think that this is worth the price tag. This is gonna be an item that's gonna come with me on a whole bunch of hunts. Uh, it is a little bit pricey for just a stick that's gonna hold the rifle up, but um, I think for the features that come on this, yeah, it is worth it. Why don't you come up here and we'll take a close look at its features and functions. Let's start at the base where all the stability comes from. You can see that it's a pretty big foot. There's my thumb for reference. And this is kind of flared out a little bit at the edges. It has these cutouts that are going to work uh, kind of to grab into the underbrush, you know, whatever you're uh, standing on. But I think more importantly, if you're in a ladder stand and you want some good stability without this thing moving around a bunch, even if you tilt and wobble the, uh, the stick, then it's just gonna kind of grab onto the wire or whatever your ladder stand is made of and kind of grip into that. And that should help keep it from being really noisy too. Moving up, we have an aluminum pole. Like I said, this is the tall one. So this is a pretty decent size object. And we have these labels that remind us how to uh, use this thing. Uh, this has two different sections that extend. One of them is a bit more manual. So for this one, I actually need to grip the top and the bottom and then pull to extend it. And it's actually pretty darn quiet to extend. Here, let me put this on a tripod so you can hear it. The camera is back there, but I've got my microphone attached to me and it's really close up. So here's what it sounds like to extend it. Just kind of a gentle hush. As for the, uh, the second extension piece, um, it doesn't matter if you hold it, this is gonna work under gravity. All you have to do is just squeeze the trigger. And again, the same kind of hush, very quiet. This is something that shouldn't spook game unless they are right on top of you. And as you can see, uh, this has a very smooth pivot. It feels like it's on ball bearings. That's how quiet it is. It moves around very, very smoothly. So if you're needing to track through a shot, it's gonna be pretty quiet along that axis. Now, when it comes time to stow, this is where things get a little bit different. Stowing the upper section is every bit as quiet as extending it. However, keep in mind that when you press the trigger to extend the, uh, the bottom section as well, that's actually pretty noisy. It sounds like there may be a spring somewhere in here, 
and it sounds like you're kind of clattering against each of the, uh, the little spring loops as you go past. So be careful when you collapse it. Extending is fine, collapsing, not so much. Up here we have the head, and you can see that it has a, uh, a very comfortable pistol grip. It actually, I think a lot of pistols could take uh, a note by this. It actually feels pretty darn good. Uh, but yeah, you get the, uh, the trigger that's big enough for two fingers, if you want to work it that way. And it's all camouflage, so pretty cool. Up here on the head area, we have, uh, this is really like a tripod head that has a detachable foot. I don't know if they have other products right now in stock that you can use to swap out here, but you actually can remove this. So I can pull down on this safety that kind of locks it all in place. And then pressing this button on the side will release the head. So there's that. If they have other attachments that maybe have M-Lock or Picatinny that you can just you know, connect it directly, then uh, who knows what kind of stuff they might come up with in the future. This has a pan head. So this actually can rotate once it's in place. And I found that this is really the only noisy spot in the whole system. I plan to take this apart. I'm gonna just take a, a couple Allen keys pop these out, separate these two sections, and I'm gonna get some grease between this plate and the top because this is kind of crunchy, especially in the cold out in the woods. I could hear this creaking around a bit, so we're gonna fix that. That's what the socket is like up here at the top. So that's how it opens and closes. That's how it locks that piece into place. It seems very secure. Nothing should pop out out in the field. One thing that I'd like to see is uh, perhaps an attachment for a quarter 20, yeah, I think it's quarter 20, um, a screw through here so that you can attach a camera or other device. So I could actually use this as a monopod for my camera as well. Those are my thoughts on shooting sticks in general and the trigger stick in particular. This is a product that I'm gonna be taking out a whole lot. I think on pretty much every hunt, even if I just leave it in the truck, like maybe if we get to a smaller field where I know that I'm not gonna need that kind of stability, then I'll at least you know have it nearby. And if we get into an area where maybe there's a longer shot available, yeah, this is definitely coming along. And if I'm up in a, that ladder stand, yeah, definitely taking this. Thanks a lot for watching you guys. Here's a list of the Patreon folks that make videos like these possible. Thanks a lot you guys. I hope you got something out of this and maybe you can uh, take your hunt to the next level. We'll see you around in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.